There's no better place to learn about GhostBSD than the GhostBSD website itself. But it can be a little bit tricky to find the information for newcomers. Go to click on Wiki. You scroll down. It's a bit more. Do you click on GhostBSD Wiki itself? And scroll down a little bit. And you get new here. Information for newcomers. So I'll just click on that little picture of a round red daemon. And all the information you could ever want is there. It tells you what goes PSD, what it's based on, who can use it, what's the goals. It's very comprehensive and very well put together. License restrictions, if that's your thing. And it says, GhostBSD is a great tool to learn FreeBSD and start one's adventure in the BSD world. And it is. I look at GhostBSD as a gateway operating system. So yes, almost everything's there. Every question you could possibly have. And if that tickles your fancy, if you go over to FreeBSD, because GhostBSD is derived from FreeBSD, if you go to the FreeBSD website and resources for newbies, and it'll give you more information. So these two pages will fill you in for everything you need to know. If you've got any questions regarding BSD, or course BSD and FreeBSD. Another source of information you want to try and read is the GhostBSD user handbook. Again, it's full of instructions. It may not be as comprehensive as the FreeBSD uh, handbook, which goes into far more details. It's a good introduction. Uh, it will get you up and going, either on real hardware or in a virtual machine. The brief history. So project goals, what they aim to do. Yeah, it's not too bad. And most importantly, there's some installation troubleshooting. So if you try and install GhostBSD and it doesn't quite go right, um, this will possibly help you out. If you had enough of all that reading and you want to watch a video instead, you go to my channel, my YouTube channel. You see, I've done quite a few videos there. So to search for GhostBSD related material, just go into search and type in GhostBSD. And it will bring up all the videos that I've done on GhostBSD. I should do some more tutorials on GhostBSD, I think. But there's quite a few reviews, and if you want to look at the installation process or what it looks like to use, these are a good start. One good way of finding out if an operating system is for you or it will work on your hardware that you want to install it to is to uh, use a virtual machine uh, installation first to get the feel of the operating system and then later on to actually run it from the live USB stick itself on the machine that you would like to install it to. So first and foremost, so if you go to the GhostBSD website, go up to download and it tells you at the top which version uh, you'll be downloading, which is 20.04.1. And there's two main versions. There's the official release, which is Mate, and the community release, which runs XFCE. So to you, which one you want to try? I'll go for Mate. And I'll go down to the France mirror, because it's closer to me. The UK mirror would be nice. And I usually, at this point, I usually make a donation, but I'm not in this instance, but I usually just donate a couple of dollars. Doesn't seem a lot, but if everyone did that who downloaded a, a copy of the ISO, it would mean a, a lot of difference to the, the developers. And as you can see, it's downloading quite fast. Nice speedy servers. Let's fast forward through that so we're not here for a while. There we go. So you've got the ISO now. You can take that ISO to uh, have it burnt to a USB stick if you wish and boot up on that or load it into a, a virtual box session which we're going to do right now 
We're going to go into the, the ins and outs of setting up a virtual box. I think I've done a video on that. But, and if you're familiar with it, it sh really should be quite easy. Um, there we go. To speed through this. I mean, one of the advantages of using uh, VirtualBox um, is it's not going to give you a true feeling of uh, what the operating system is going to be like. But it lets you look around with, with no uh, no real price to pay for that. You, know, you don't have to erase any hardware, you know, any installations, you don't have to buy new hardware. It will let you do it practically for free. So once it's done, there you are. You can, of course, just use it as a live session, or... But there's no point in doing that in a virtual box, we might as well install it, so we're just going to install it now. I'll uh, just go through the steps again, fast. So once it's installed, make sure that you take out the ISO from the virtual box and we'll go into the actual installation. There we go. Just wait for the screen resolution. Right, that's fine. Yeah, and there you go. Got a nice installation of Ghost BSD. You can have a look what's available, what it comes with. It can come with a right lot. It comes with some Office uh, applications. It come with any games. Uh, it's a very workman-like uh, OS. Doesn't mean you can't customize it and add things yourself. And LibreOffice is there. Works very nice. A basic install of GhostBSD will do everything that you want it. There you go. Try before you commit. What I mean by that is, before you decide to move to GhostBSD, give it a try first. Right, we'll just get rid of that. Okay, do So, if you want to test whether or not GhostBSD, or FreeBSD in general, the GhostBSD will work with your, um, your hardware or your laptop or desktop, bring it onto a USB key and boot that up. And you will essentially be running GhostBSD from your USB stick, but use it utilizing your hardware on your target machine. And you can test your graphics card, you can test your sound card, you can test all the things that you want to, even the printer if you wish. And it will give you an idea that, yes you can, then move to GhostBSD. Sometimes people might have an issue with the Wi-Fi card or the Wi-Fi uh, dongle. If that's the case, you can test it out now and seek help in the forums or Telegram group. Yep, so this is running on my test machine by the USB stick and it's as functional as the VirtualBox installation or our actual hard drive installation. Might run a little bit slower because it's from a USB 2 uh, USB stick, so, you know. The faster the USB that you use, the better experience you're going to get. If you find that you like Ghost PhD, which I think you will, and you want to get a little bit more into it and use it, not full time yet, that will come, but use it part-time with your existing operating system, then there are several ways before you even contemplate wiping off your existing operating system, moving full-time. And that is to use dual booting. Now, I'm not a fan of dual booting. I, I haven't dual booted a system for, <laughs> must be, what, 15 years maybe, maybe 20, if you want to. It's uh, one of the benefits. It's a way to keep your existing operating system and try something new. Handy if you have limited hard drive space. And it's good for low power systems. Say, for instance, um, you know it works on a system with low RAM. You know, if you've got a present uh, Linux installation, you'll know it'll work on that. Put GhostBase next to it. Some of the bad things about 
dual booting is that you can accidentally overwrite your, your existing operating system before you're ready to. Uh, it can slow down your workflow if you wanting to do something in Windows or Linux and then you just decide that you want to do it in uh, GhostBSD, you, you'll be chopping and changing and it will slow you down. And lock partitions. Um, what I mean by that is ownership. If you're using a, you know, a Linux and you want to access the partitions that's created in GhostBSD, you might not be able to access the UFS or the ZFS and it becomes a bit of a mess. So I'm not a great fan of um, dual booting, but it's there for somebody if they want to use it. I think a better idea than dual booting would be to uh, get an external hard drive. Either in a dock or, I don't know, perhaps you've got um, like a caddy tray in your uh, machine, your desktop, and that takes uh, an extra hard drive plugged in and a hot swappable drive, I think. You could use something like that. I mean, that way that you will, you could install uh, onto a hard drive, a proper installation onto the machine that you want, and just choose that boot time you want to boot from that particular drive, rather than uh, using dual boot. And you know for a fact then, then your existing operating system is safe. You can try all the benefits of the new OS, but you're not risking anything. And if you don't like it, just remove the drive or format it and use it for something else. So you're really not losing anything. So as an external drive would allow installation on an extra drive without interfering with the OS you use daily. But careful where you put your bootloader. So sometimes, you know, you can mess things up. When I was first starting to use uh, FreeBSD, I think I went for the, it's such a long time ago now, but I think I, went, I actually went for this particular way where I could boot using a, an external drive or a, a drive that slotted into a hot swap. It was some safe method where I knew I could always go back if it didn't work. Which it did on a few occasions. And of course, I think the best solution of all is if you've got any spare computers, laptops or desktops. Not these old ones here. This is a, a picture I found. I can't remember where I got it. I found it a long time ago. Um, I think we've all, we've all had something similar. Uh, I used to have something similar to this, actually. I've got a rack like that, but I've, the hardware's changed. Um, but if you've got a spare PC or laptop, then really, as long as it's not as old as these, then you've got almost like a test PC. You can install anything you want on, onto it, and then you can change and tweak and you're not going to interfere with your existing workstation or desktop in any way whatsoever. And to me, this is the best option. I know not everybody can get a spare PC or a spare laptop. You know, sometimes money's tight or space is a premium. But if you can, I think this is the best way to do it. If you're serious about trying different operating systems, if you're a Linux distro hopper, I think you'll already know this. Try and go for the... I don't know, not the cheapest, but try and go for the, the most spec, the relatively as close to the more modern system as you can. And then you can enjoy the freedom that this will give you. I mean, it does... It can take you on a road to accruing more uh, systems than you've uh, possibly got space for, like I do. But it's a fantastic way of doing this. So, I think that these three tips... Do some reading, do a little bit of research to know what you're trying to get into. Test it out on a virtual machine, or run it as a uh, live uh, USB session. Or install it to an external hard drive, or a spare PC. Then you can move when the time is right, if you want to. Of course, you don't have to. If you want to move, then you can move to GhostBSD full time. Anyway, I hope these tips will help you in some way. It's not scary to move to a new OS, and GhostBSD is very user friendly. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Uh -huh.